there everyone welcome to Poor Painting with Ron. In today's video we're going to do another rainbow bloom. My last one turned out really well so today I'd like to have another go at doing one but this time on a bigger canvas. So I've picked today uh, a large 45 by 45 centimeter square canvas with a, a thick edge and just like usual I've prepared the back using some painter's tape and some large push pins to keep it off the surface of the table, make it easier to handle. All right, now I've gone through the recipe before that I use for bloom pours. Um, if you've missed the, the detailed recipe, I'll put a link to that one at the end of this video so you can have a, a look at a, a more detailed explanation. But just going over it quickly, three layers in the bloom pour the bottom layer, the pillow, needs to be the thickest. Then you have your color layer on the top, which is a bit thinner. And then the thinnest layer of all is your cell activator that creates all the interesting lacing effects. Now your pillow paint um, is just a plain ordinary acrylic indoor low sheen um, wall paint, white. So I've got a white British paint, interior low sheen wall paint. That's all you need for the pillow. You use lots, so buy a big can. Then the color layer on the top, the pouring medium is a mixture of untinted low sheen wall paint. So make sure you get the untinted low sheen wall paint. And I've, if there's different varieties available, I've picked the extra bright wall paint. Keeps your colors true. Other ones may make them go a bit weird. And I've mixed that with um, Joe Sonia's varnish. It's a polyurethane varnish. I'm, I'm quite sure any polyurethane varnish will work. Just make sure it's a non-yellowing one. And I've mixed that three, paint, three parts of the paint to two parts of the varnish. And then you mi I've mixed that with the colours one part colour to two parts of the pouring medium. Now you may need to add a bit more pouring medium to get the right consistency, but you want something that's a little bit like thick honey. that just dribbles off your spoon. Joe Sonia's are quite thin, so I've used two parts of the pouring medium. If your colour is thicker, you may need to use more pouring medium to get the consistency. Um, Joe Sonia's, you don't need to use Joe Sonia's. Um, any high pigmented paint should work. You stretch it out quite far, so something that's high in pigment is probably better to use. Now, the, the colours I've picked today to get my rainbow pour are purple, and we've got naphthol crimson, and ultramarine blue, We've got aqua and yellow light. Now, there is a danger of getting mud when mixing these together. I didn't get mud last time, so I'm hoping I won't get mud this time. Now, the cell activator on the top. I've used Amsterdam titanium white. Seems to work the best with this sort of technique to get the lacing. Other brands of white, you may not quite get as good lacing with that. And I've mixed that one part paint to three parts flow troll to get a really thin mix. Okay, so that's done. Let's get creating. So we're back. I've got my canvas ready and I've mixed up my paints. Um, I've put them in these squeeze bottles just to make it easier putting it out onto the canvas. So I've got my colours ready, I've got all my spatulas ready, the canvas ready. And the next step will be to put my pillow onto the canvas. Now don't be shocked at how much paint I'm going to use. I need to make sure I put enough off so that it will carry the colours over to the edges when I spin my painting out. You'll see what I mean in a little bit. So we've got our lovely house paint here and we pour it into the center or more or less into the center. Okay. 
Okay, I will put some more on in a bit, but before I do, I'll use my spatula thing tool, whatever it's called, just to cover my canvas. A bit like icing, icing a cake. I'll just bring it to the edges. And then I'll cover my sides. The sides are quite thick. So I'll put some paint on, even though I'm sure some paint will dribble over the edges. I'll give it a bit of a torch as well. Just to get rid of some of the air bubbles. Because if the air bubbles pop under the colour, you're going to end up with white spots on your finished painting. Which I don't particularly like. So I'm keeping most of my paint in the middle, where I want it to be. I'm just coating the edges to make sure it all slides properly. tool to paint over the signs. Don't have to be too pedantic so long as there's a bit of cover there. I prefer the thin edge canvases for this sort of pour but I didn't have any so I'm using this thick edge. <laughs> if it doesn't work I won't do it again. I'm contemplating changing it up a little bit today by wrecking the bloom pour with a, a skewer before I spin it out. So. I'm still thinking about it. I'll do the swiping bit first before I make my final decision just to see if it looks interesting. Almost there. I could use my fingers but that just makes my gloves really horrible even before I start the actual painting. Let's go around the back. It's just like icing a cake. Now I normally say how much paint you're supposed to use for each size canvas, but I don't really know for this one. I just pour it on until I, I think I have enough. It's probably better having too much on your canvas than not enough. There's nothing worse than spinning it out and realizing it won't spin anymore because there's nothing left to carry the paint over the surface. I think I've more or less covered everything. As I spin my canvas, it's going to go over the edges anyway. I'm throwing it on the ground. I'm sure I'll step in it and carry it over the garage as well. Now, I still have a fair amount of paint there, but I will pour some more on. make a decent sized pillow because it has a, a long way to travel. So that'll do. Now before I put the colours on, as I said, I'll do a bit of a torch. Get rid of as many air bubbles as I can. Okay, I'm back.
back again. My mum was trying to Skype me, so I, I had to stop and ask her if I could ring back later. So we're back and ready to start. OK, I'm going to drizzle my colours into the middle. I'll start with the dark ones first, perhaps blue, and I'll finish with the lighter ones. Oh, before I do, I'll just torch this new bit. The bubbles. That's better. All right. I hope this works because it's lots of paint. And just drizzling the paint on. And then we've got some purple. Now how you put it on is completely up to you. You can create puddles or stripes or whatever your heart desires. I'm doing a rainbow one. I'm just putting the colours anywhere. Turquoise. Like so, and then I'll finish with the yellow. The yellow will just lighten everything up, I'm sure. Seems amazing that we'll get a nice looking painting out of this. But we'll soon see. All right, now the next layer, of course, is my cell activator, which does all of the magic. Now I could just pour the cell activator on the top but because it's so thin it tends to sink underneath all the colors so I put it on my paint scraper instead and then I'll use this tool to swipe my color over the top. Now you could use a blow dryer but I'm still hopeless at using a blow dryer. I find this way works pretty well for me. So I'll put my cell activator on there Make sure my tool is pretty well coated. You don't need lots. And then I'll just swipe over the top. Now you don't want to push it into the pillow. That wasn't very good, but we'll see. I might come back to that. See how the little cells are lacing is forming already? Oh, that one, I didn't press hard enough. I might do that one again. That's better. You don't have to go all the way to the end. See some action happening, which is what we want. You don't want to push it into the pillow. Not 
worry too much about the edges because that all gets spun off. tried it on this size canvas before so I'll be very interested to see if it works Okay, now let's see if we're missing anything, maybe. I could do this a little bit. I don't want to go over everything too much because then I might make it muddy. Okay, how is that looking? Not too bad. I'm just worried about this bit. Take that up there. And... this will go to the side I might do a little bit there how's that looking yeah, not too bad now will I be daring and use the skewer to wreck it a little bit or not so I was thinking of maybe doing some wavy, wavy lines through it. But I'm just wondering if these wavy lines will be enough. Oh, why not? Why not? Give it a go. See what happens. Creates a bit of interest, I'm sure. set up my camera ready for the spinning and by then the cells should have done what they're doing ready to be spun out it takes a couple of minutes for everything to to happen there so we'll be back soon okay so here's my spinner I've got my cake spinner in the middle of my puppy pool that I picked up for $12 at Kmart and I've just lined it with some puppy pedal pads to catch the paint when they're super grotty, I can just throw them out and put some new ones in. Now, you don't have to use a puppy, pedal, uh, a puppy pool. You can use a large cardboard box or even a, a child's blow-up swimming pool. Anything that can stop your paint from going all over your furniture. All right, so that's that. I'll just get my painting and then we'll spin it out and see what happens. Okay.
Okay. Now my canvas was too thick, and with the push pins underneath, the push pins were sitting on the bottom of my puppy pool, which I didn't anticipate. So I've put a cardboard box underneath my spinner just to lift it up, and I hope I don't end up losing it all as I spin it out. So we'll do a gentle one first and see what happens. And that one worked. See if I can do a bit faster. No, I didn't. Slow it down. Okay. That's a bit better. Things are moving slowly. Don't want to do it too fast. I risk losing my canvas. So it may take a little bit longer than otherwise. But we'll get there. Oh yes, it's looking interesting. We're creeping slowly to the edges. would happen. Let's try it again. Right, we are getting there slowly. It's a bit unusual, and this corner, so it will Let's move it a bit. No, that wasn't good. A bit slow. It'll still move. No, it's looking looking interesting. sure about the wrecking bits but uh, anyway worth a go Look, we're almost there cells happening. Very pretty lacing. It's sort of all opening up. Will I do one more? Do you think? Yes? No? Um, maybe, maybe one more, hey? Hmm. Oh, 
decisions, decisions. It's certainly colourful. So very lovely cells, very lovely lacing effects happening. Hmm. Will I do one more or not? Or will I leave it? So if I keep spinning, the, the ones in the middle are just going to get huge. I don't necessarily want them huge. But I think there's a lot of interest happening in this painting. I'm not too fussed about that part but yeah there's nothing nothing I can do about that part but the the rest I think is just just lovely not much mud plenty of color interesting interesting cells well I'll put this back on the table and then I'll bring you in for a closer look right so here's the finished painting hopefully you can see it I've got the camera above my head I'll bring you down. Now the use of the skewer did give some interesting effects in the painting. It's worthwhile experimenting a little bit more with. I'm not convinced yet I do like using the skewer, but yeah, we'll see how things go. It's certainly a very interesting looking painting. So I don't particularly like that spot, but yeah, there's nothing I can do about that. But overall, I think that the painting is lovely. Well, that was interesting, wasn't it? We certainly had a bit of an adventure along the way. A phone call from my mother on Skype and then my puppy pool stand thing not being deep enough to hold the painting. But anyway, we got there in the end. And I think the overall result is, is really interesting. Really, really lovely taken as a whole. I really like the, the bright centre and then the more, more delicate um, colours around the outside edge. Now, um, as always, if you like what you see today, please press the like button. It really helps my videos to get found on YouTube. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, please take a, a moment to subscribe. Now, if you're new to um, Bloom Paws in particular, I've put a link at the end of this video. You can click on to see my very first one that goes through all the steps in great detail for you. Um, so, happy painting, and we'll see you next time.